guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing some scene walkthroughs of the Pepsi product shots that we have created for our recently uploaded motion graphics breakdown. Now, this specific video is not really a tutorial, but we'll go through a lot of the specific concepts that we used to create these interesting product shots, so it should be pretty useful to apply to your own projects. The first shot we're going to start off with is our dolly zoom of the Pepsi product here. As you can see here, we have some really nice droplets on our Pepsi can. And for this shot, because the camera move or animation wasn't very complex, we did want to make sure to dial in the lighting as best we could to highlight the Pepsi text here on the can and also to just make our product here look as good as possible. Because if your camera move is simpler, you can often dial in the lighting to look a lot better for that specific angle. So this is going to be the one we're going to break down first. As you can see, we have some nice water water droplets that we have instanced on this 3D model. So let's get started here inside of Blender. This is our 3D scene setup here. As you can see, pretty basic scene here. I've created a very basic psych wall here to act as our background for the shot. And then of course, I've added our Pepsi asset right here in the center of our scene. And this is our camera, which I've just keyframed dollying forward here onto our Pepsi can. So just a basic camera move there. And to create that dolly zoom effect, as you guys probably know, I've just animated the focal length of the camera to zoom out as we're getting closer to the Pepsi can. So as you can see here, if we go to the camera tab here, you can see that I've actually keyframed the focal length of the camera, one keyframe at frame one, so that it's 85 millimeters. Actually, I'll show you in the through the camera view here as well. So I have this guy at 85 millimeters when our camera is further away from the Pepsi can. Then as we get closer to the can at frame 100, I've actually zoomed out the focal length of the lens on our camera to 35 millimeters and just keyframe that value to create that dolly zoom effect on the background. So that's a pretty simple move that you can do very easily and create an interesting looking background for your shots. And it's also just going to give the can a different look at those different focal lengths. So pretty basic layout for this first shot. Now for the actual Pepsi can asset that we have added to this product render. I just pulled that model off of Turbo Squid. I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's a nice looking model, but we wanted to add these droplets to it to make it a little bit more appealing to the viewer. And I've just done that with a very basic particle system. I'll go ahead and turn off our particle settings so you can see our Pepsi can by itself here. And I'll just show it without any lighting right now. Uh, so I'll just maybe bring this up to five. So this is our Pepsi can model without those droplets. I have added a little bit of surface imperfections on the actual texture just to give it a little bit more of a real world feel. But this is the general idea. And to add those particles, I've just created a few droplets over here off to the side of camera. I've modeled three basic water droplets and I've modeled four other variations of kind of dripping droplets that we can instance on our Pepsi can as well. And I've just taken these droplets, I've added a very basic glass material shader to them to give the appearance of water. I've played around with the values a little bit and the roughness to dial in the look that I liked. And then I've added these four trailing droplets to their own collection, as well as the three round droplets to a separate collection so that I could instance them separately using their own weight painted groups on our Pepsi can. So I'll show you guys that here in a second. If we just go to our camera, we'll go to our particle system settings. The first particle system that I added for our droplets was the trail droplet system, as you can see here. And I'll just go ahead and show you guys what that looks like by itself. So as you can see here, I've just used a basic particle system with 300 particles instanced over our can. And I've made them all random, played around with the rotation and the randomized setting to give them a lot of variation as best I could. Then I've also scaled them down quite a bit and I've used a vertex group, which I'll show you here in a second to show where I actually wanted those droplets to show up. So as you can see here, if I turn this off, our trail droplets are instanced all over our Pepsi can here. And we get this weird, you know, spikiness off of the trail droplets, which wouldn't actually occur in the real world, just based on the physics of that droplet sliding down the can, it wouldn't obviously go out there. But if I use a weight painted group, I can actually tell Blender where I want those droplets to show up. So as you can see here, if I go into our white paint mode, I've actually created a vertex group called trail droplets, which we have used to tell Blender where we want those trail droplets to show up on our can here. So I've just painted just on the sides of the can, kind of in random areas, specifically avoiding where that Pepsi text would be so that it wouldn't interfere with the advertisement. And obviously I haven't painted anything on the top here because these particles aren't instanced very well on the top of our can, as I showed earlier. So I've created one vertex group for the trail droplets, and then I've created another one here for the round droplets. So as you can see here for our second particle,
mechanical system on this Pepsi can. I'll go ahead and turn off the first one and show the second one. This round droplet system is one that I've painted mostly over the entire can except for where our Pepsi text would be. And you can see that these two combined together are gonna add a little bit more randomness. But you can see this is just the round droplet system. I've added 10,000 particles and they're much smaller obviously compared to the trail droplets. But combining these two together I found had a really nice look to it. As you can see if I go into rendered view really quick, it creates a look as if the can had just come out of the cooler or something. Obviously you can play around with the material setting of your specific droplets depending on the lighting. For example, you could actually make these a bit brighter because they might be a little bit dark. But this is just the general idea on how I added a little bit more detail to the can itself and I think it worked out pretty well. As far as the material for the psych wall on the ground here, I just used a basic glossy material with a little bit of roughness because I wanted to catch a little bit of specularity off of the ground here. As you can see, you can see I wanted to get that reflection of the Pepsi can in the actual ground here. I'm just going to bring down the brightness of our world really quick. I'll go to camera view. And now you can see that reflection of the Pepsi can on the glossy floor here. And of course, this isn't the lighting we actually used in the final shot. I'm just using a basic colored background to show you guys the general scene setup here. But let's go over the lighting for this shot next. For the lighting of this shot, I've actually brought our background down to zero. So starting at complete darkness, and then I've used a variety of different area lights here to light up different parts of the scene. All right, guys, so I have two different collections containing all of our different area lights. The first one is just our general lighting for the scene, which does have some area lights lighting up our Pepsi can, but then I also have two different highlight lights that are lighting the specific Pepsi text on our can. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the main lights we have for our scene really quick. So this is before our lighting, obviously it's just totally black. And then when we turn them on, we get something a little bit nicer as you can see here. So when thinking about lighting a product, one thing I like to do is consider it in steps. I like to light the product first and then the background. Some people would like to do the background first and then the product. However, since we want the eyes to go to the product, I think it was most important to start out with that step. So you can see we have some nice background lighting going on here, but I'll go ahead and turn those off for a second and we'll focus on the actual lights on the Pepsi can. I'll go ahead and open up another window here. One view for our Pepsi can, and then we'll use this for our main view here. So you can see we have a variety of different lights going on here. The first thing I did to bring out our Pepsi can from the background was add these double edge lights as you can see here, which is bringing out the edge of our Pepsi can. So you can see I've just added these two different area lights that are directed, you know, directly toward our Pepsi can here, just kind of three quarter backlighting our Pepsi can on either side of it. I've kept their color at white and have the power at 100. And these are the main lights that I was using to separate the Pepsi can from the background. I did want to create separation on the top of our can as well. So I added one more edge light right here here and that's going to help create that top light edge as you can see here and help create a little bit more shape there. At this point I needed some light on the front of our can as well. As you can see we have a really nice edge around the back of the can but we do need to obviously show the logo of the light so I've added one more light just overhead and kind of filling from camera as you can see here. So just right above the camera kind of tilted down on the can. This is going to be the main source that we're using to light up the actual Pepsi can. However you'll notice that we're getting a little bit of specularity here and it's not really light the actual Pepsi text very well so we have some accent lights coming in for that but the reason we're using this light kind of at an angle here coming down at our subject from kind of a frontal perspective is because if we stack our light directly forward kind of straight up and down like this you'll notice that we're getting a lot of reflections on the actual can now you may actually like this in certain cases but I wanted a cleaner look on the actual Pepsi can for this specific shot and also when we do this you'll notice that we get a lot of spill on the background uh, psych wall that we have created. So rather than going directly frontal, I've gone a little bit more of like a top angle and that's gonna keep it moody while also filling in these areas that need a little bit more light. So I've done that for the force source in our scene at around 200 watts. I made that source a little bit softer by making it a little bit bigger. And that's just gonna make sure that the light is a little bit more even across our Pepsi can here. After this, I added a variety of lights that were going to light up our background behind the Pepsi can. So you can see here, just show a few of these. I have these purple lights right here and they're just directed directly toward the psych wall and they're bouncing off of it. And since our psych wall is reflective, it's actually reflecting off of it and creating the specularity on the floor here, which is quite nice as well. And I have those lights at around 500. I have the color full magenta here. And I've also brought down the beam shape of these lights to 9.4. So they're not going to spread out and spill everywhere. They're going to be some hard edges here to create a little bit more shape on the background. So I've added those here to create a little bit more 
shape. I've added a few lights here to hit the floor and also the background as well. So you can see if I turn these guys on, they say point light because originally they were, but these are actually area lights as well. And these guys I've chosen to be a little bit more kind of blue or turquoise, you might say. And I'm just using them to kind of highlight the innermost portion of our psych wall. And again, create some specularity off the floor there, but some specularity that's just a little bit different from our purple lights hitting the deep background. So that's what we've done there. Finally, I did want to highlight the Pepsi text itself. So I have some specific lights here specifically for the Pepsi can. As you can see, I'll just zoom in here. Um, we have one right here and then I have another on the other side. So you can see these two guys and I'm just using them to light up specifically where that logo is. And you can see they're also creating some weird spill on the floor here. So what I've done is I've actually decided to exclude these from our background render layer. So they don't actually show up on our background. So as you can see here for this view layer, which I wouldn't actually you know, show my background, we would have, you know, something like this and we can composite this on top of our background and our background view layer, as you can see here, we're actually excluding those specific lights for the Pepsi text. So that's one way you can deal with spill if you really need to in a more precise way. So you can see here, these last two lights really help to bring up our Pepsi text specifically. So there's one and two, you can see that just helps to bring out the actual brand name there. So that's really important. Obviously you want to brighten up the name of your product without making it sloppy or just blasting light everywhere. So these specific lights have a small beam angle around 20 degrees to really dial in where we want those to show up and to draw the eye to that specific part of the image. So that's what we've done here. Just to go over it one more time, we have our background lights right here. All of these guys are hitting our deep background but are not directed toward the can itself. Then these two guys right here are directed right toward our can and are just double backlighting our actual Pepsi can. Then we've added our top edge light right here. Then finally, we get to our frontal lights. We have our main fill source and then finally our two kind of spotlights on the Pepsi text itself. So a lot of lights going on here. Of course, you can definitely do some product lighting with just a few lights. However, I just wanted to really dial in the lighting for this specific shot. So I decided to go with this. So again, I've rendered out two separate view layers here, one for the Pepsi can without our psych wall in the background, just like this. So we're just rendering this guy out. And then for our background, we have just our psych wall in the background. And then in the compositor, I've overlaid one on top of the other. And then of course we can dial in the look a little bit better. So I've rendered this out as a multi-layer OpenXR sequence. And then inside of After Effects, I've barely done any compositing here. I just have our background view layer. I've added some Lumetri color to adjust the colors a little bit here. And then of course, I've added our Pepsi can on top of our main background render. I've used the Lumetri color to cool it off a bit there, as you can see. And I've added a dust and scratches effect to get rid of some of the fireflies in the sampling itself. So this is the final composite here. Pretty basic setup, two view layers, and really just dialing in the look in the actual CG renders within Blender itself and not doing too much crazy compositing. So I may do a video on how we can dial in the look even more in the post-production process, but for this specific shot, I thought it looked pretty good. All right, guys, so this is the scene layout for our second Pepsi product shot. As you can see here, this is a pretty basic scene setup as well. There's obviously a little bit of animation going on here, as well as a particle system that we've used to create this ice cube vortex field here. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys this shot from start to finish. As far as the Pepsi can goes, it's exactly the same. We've used those weight painted trail droplets, as well as the standard round droplets all over our can here to give it a little bit more detail, as if it's just been pulled out of some ice and has some water on it. I have animated our Pepsi can going up here and kind of rotating to show off the uh, actual Pepsi text here. So I've just rotated it and lit it in a way so that at the end of the shot, we're actually showing the Pepsi text. So I've just animated our Pepsi can kind of rotating up here with the camera. And I'll go ahead and turn off our ice cube system really quick, as well as our lighting, uh, just so we get a better hang of the basics here. As far as the camera setup goes, I have our focal length at around 100 millimeters. So I'm going for a fairly long lens shot, kind of zooming in on the Pepsi can. I've used actually this empty here to control the camera. So you can see if I kind of move this empty around, our camera always points toward it. And on the camera, I just have used a basic damped track that is tracked toward this empty. And by using this damped track with the camera, we can create a more unique looking camera move with a bit more ease. So now the camera will always look at our subject if we align this empty toward our subject. So you can see even if we move the camera around, 
we can you know always have it point toward that empty and then we can create some dynamic movement that's much easier to control so that's our camera setup here as you can see our camera just slightly tilts up and that is due to our empty control being animated here so i've just animated our empty kind of tilting up slightly and going along with our can here so I've just animated our Pepsi can as well as our camera here to create a basic move there. I thought it'd be cool to add some ice cube particles around our product. So I imported these ice cube elements as you can see here. I've just imported these basic ice cube assets into our scene and then I've added them to their own group so that we can instance them on a particle system. So as you can see here, if I turn on my ice cube system, you'll see that we have a very basic particle system. I've just created a basic particle emitter on this plane here at the base of our scene. I've emitted 58 particles with a lifetime of 500 starting at frame and negative 140 so that we can allow them to come into our scene before we actually start rendering. I've added some rotation to these particles so that as we move, they rotate as well. So as you can see here on the particles themselves, they actually rotate, which is a nice touch. And I've used that ice cube particle collection, as you can see here, as our instance system. So you can see if I render this particle system out as a halo, this is what we get. But of course, instead of instancing these basic halos, we're actually rendering that collection of ice cube particles, which is adding a lot to our scene. Now, to get the particles to spin in this specific way, I've added a turbulence force field here that is parented to our Pepsi can. And as you can see here, if we go into our physics settings, it's just a vortex force field with a strength of negative 0.1. And by doing that, we're making the particles spin along with this force field and creating a much more interesting looking particle system. And of course, a much more interesting looking final shot as well. As far as lighting goes for this scene, it was a little bit chaotic here, but I just kind of played around with it to create some specularity on the product itself. You can see here I have a lot of different area lights going on here to light our Pepsi can, so I'll just go through them one by one. The reason there are so many of them is because as the Pepsi can kind of rotates throughout space, I wanted to have the various lights reflect off the can at certain moments to create a little bit of a glimmer on our product. So that's why I've done that here. On our right side, I'll go into render view really quick and I'll just go through our lights one by one here. So I started off with a big backlight here, just edge lighting our can, as you can see here, just blasting toward camera. That's creating kind of a double edge on our Pepsi can because it is so big, it is wrapping around our Pepsi can quite a bit. However, again, I was missing the top portion of the can. So I added a little top light as well. That's fairly subtle, but it's adding a little bit of top light edge, as you can see there. So you can see on the can, that top edge has a little bit of a glimmer once we add this. Then I've added a little bit of fill coming from kind of above camera. That's gonna act as our main fill source and our main front light on the Pepsi can itself. And all of these lights are completely white. Finally, I added a little side light here, as you can see, which is creating that specularity on the front of the can. So this one's a little bit more harsh. And it's also creating a lot more specularity on the can because it's quite a bit closer to the camera. We're actually getting that reflection of that light on the can itself rather than the other light which are just illuminating the can and filling in the shadows or creating the edges on the Pepsi can itself. Finally, I've added this last light here to create a little bottom edge on our Pepsi can. So you can see this guy right here is just kind of below our scene, creating a little bit of specularity on the edge there. And yeah, that was our final lighting setup. Nothing too crazy. This one's definitely not as clean as the first one. However, it was fun to play around with and create a little bit of specularity as the Pepsi can moves throughout that space. And also all these lights help to illuminate and bring out the ice cube particle system in the scene as well. So a little bit of an unconventional setup for this one. However, I did like the final result. For this specific shot, I've rendered out two different view layers. I've rendered out one for just the Pepsi can itself, and I've made the ice cube particle system an indirect only layer, meaning that they would only affect the lighting on our can indirectly, and they wouldn't actually show up in our shot. Then finally, I've created one more view layer here for our ice cubes by themselves, and I've made the Pepsi can a holdout on this ice cube system so that whenever we overlay this ice cubes on top of our composite, they don't actually show up if they're intersecting or if they're behind the Pepsi can. For this specific shot, I've just overlaid the Pepsi can view layer on top of the ice cube particle system with an alpha overnode here. I have denoised them a bit since I didn't use a lot of samples. And then I've overlaid those combined images on top of a fairly dark background for our final result. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.